Hi everybody, it's Dr. Modi Charter back again for another hoot. I want to apologize, kind of vanished the last few months. I promised I was going to upload a video weekly and I failed on my promise, didn't do it. I had to a little, some personal issues and job related issues. You know, my main job is actually researching birds. So I had lots of uh, research proposals to write and, and also some papers and some other reports and stuff like that. So again, I apologize. Um, but uh, one of the main things that we do, at least related to the, the channel here, is we have to up tape and keep the cameras going. It takes a lot, a lot of work. You typically don't get to see it. Uh, as I said, a lot of our systems in the past, I told you, are solar powered. So those take a little bit more uh, uh, care. This week we have to go and actually replace batteries, and many of them that lasted almost three years, but we have to replace those and in this video I want to talk about a trip that I made last week I actually flew to the US of Florida specifically to go to Barnell Florida cam number one and two to clean them out and do some maintenance around those cameras so in this video I'll give you kind of behind the scenes view of both those cams that you typically do not get to see in the video so I hope you like it so the University of Florida is a, is a great university many of you probably know of it they have the Barnell project for years um, we first went to Florida Barnell Cam Number Two. There, if you remember, there were some nestlings that died, so it was important to clean out that box. Around Barnell, Barnell uh, Cam Number Two, you can see it's on the building. You have beautiful fields, a lot of sugar cane around this box. So we uh, luckily they provided us a ladder, had to go up, clean out the box. Now this is not the most fun part of my job. It's quite disgusting, it smells. I wore a mask, mainly not because of the smell. Uh, actually, since having COVID twice, my, I actually don't smell almost anything, which has a good, good, good size, but at least when you're cleaning out bun all boxes. Um, but uh, in, in this case, I wore a mask mainly just not to inhale the, the small debris and dust that you find in these boxes, which are mainly uh, all different um, organic matter from the dead animals and pellets and stuff they eat, which is kind of disgusting. Um, so you clean it out. Um, I don't completely clean out the box because it's important to leave at least some of the uh, remains inside the box because the barn owls, they like to lay uh, their eggs on some sort of matter. Obviously in nature, when it's 100% nature, we say we don't like to intervene. Okay, here we're kind of intervening once a year or so we do clean out the boxes. If we don't do that, the uh, pellets and debris will increase to a point where the runoffs may not necessarily have a place to breed. So we do that, but we don't completely clean out the boxes because there, there is a kind of an ecosystem there of different organisms and stuff that uh, live in these boxes. So we cleaned the camera, then we moved on to barn owl cam number uh, one, which is completely different. It's on a pole, uh, about two and a half meters uh, uh, high. And it's in a, in a grassy area surrounded by some uh, buildings and uh, greenhouses. And again, here, same thing. I had to go up, clean out the the the, can the box itself, and also clean the cameras. All that dust uh, builds up on the lenses of the cameras, and then you will not be able to get to see the barn owls, uh, beautiful barn owls. Even when we can't clean them, it's enough that a barn owl enters a box and makes a bunch of mess, and, and it becomes dirty quite fast. Uh, we do our best to clean these lenses, but to, we don't want to disturb too much. Uh, so um, in both of these boxes, we have pairs in them. In cam number two, there's actually a pair of breeding with on already on eggs. Uh, and hopefully in, in cam one, they'll lay soon. At this time, when they lay the eggs in incubate or before, so we don't want to bother at all because that can cause the pair to completely abandon the boxes. So uh, in this box number one, it's a little bit different. It's actually uh, the one box is on a building which you would think would be more disturbed. I'm not sure. Uh, both the boxes are kind of in a place where there's lots of workers around these boxes consistently. Luckily at the University of Florida there, they respect and love the owls because they know the owls help them reduce their uh, rodent populations, in particular the rats that cause lots of damage to sugarcane, and, and unfortunately also those cute little rabbits that we love to see and cute are cute, but they also eat them. Um, so we, uh, it's important for us to always have uh, maintenance on these boxes. The other thing I, I wanted to do was just try to make sure that all the boxes, uh, the construction uh, was more well made, that there weren't any screws loose. Or, so I brought some, um, some L-shaped um, 
almost like hinges that I added on the boxes just to strengthen them up a little bit. As you know, in Florida, it's not only humid, but it's very hot there. So the boxes uh, uh, get can, can be quite dis dis destroyed just from the weather itself. Um, here's some other boxes around the area. You can see that uh, it's mainly agriculture area. And there's other boxes. In addition to the two boxes with the cameras, there's actually more boxes around in, in, in the fields. Most of them are in poles. Um, so that was basically it. It was a great time. I have to thank uh, Gary from the University of Florida. That he's always there to help and the staff. And it's, it's such a great, uh, it's quite amazing that uh, we're able to add these cams up. Me being in Israel, them being in the U.S., uh, and any technical issues, I have a great staff there uh, that helps out all the time. But it is technically challenges. Obviously, in Israel, I can go and run, uh, run drive to two or three hours as possible. Obviously, to fly to the U.S. is difficult. So without the help of the University of Florida, this would not be possible. Uh, so it is a true cooperation in these boxes. So I hope you got to see a little bit um, a different view of these boxes, just around them and and some of the basic maintenance that we do on these boxes, uh, it, it's it's uh, not the as I said the cl not the best smelling or clean cleanliness of, of work to do, but it is important to upkeep them. And not only that, I didn't mention it before, clean all boxes is important because uh, uh, all that um, debris pellets remains becomes heavy after a period of time, and it becomes so heavy that it actually can destroy the boxes. So um, unfortunately, financially, we don't have the most amount of money in the world. I know some of you probably think, well, you know, this channel, we've done extremely well, uh, over uh, 100 million views, but uh, our ad revenue is super low on this channel uh, because of the content is showing you people the live nature. And YouTube doesn't like to show birds mating, birds eating other animals, birds fighting, all the uh, drama that you get to see in these cameras uh, this is nature, and it's not Disney, but um, it's not good for ads. So we get a very small percentage of its ad revenue um, that we should be getting a hundred of the thousand dollars a year. It's not even close. Wish it was. In fact, the amount of money that we get for ad revenue is not enough to even keep the cameras going. So luckily, we rely and we have uh, people that donate money and stuff to be able to do that. We don't actually make any, almost any money. We don't make any money, I and mean, we, if anything, lose money. Um, but we love it and you know it's part of my job as a researcher I love my job uh, I love writing the articles but for me to pass on and be able to show you people sometimes the things that we get to see and also I learn from your observations and stuff about these cameras it's uh, mutually beneficial so it's great and, and, and the reality is is that you know Disney and National Geographic BBC they're great but it's not the reality of nature is much harsher if we want to learn to protect nature, we have to f first learn about nature and understand a little bit more. Um, there is no such thing as woke in nature. It's, uh, it's quite, can be quite harsh. So again, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll try to do a better job now uploading some more videos. Uh, thank you very much. Like, comment, subscribe. Keep on watching and hoot you later.